Discrete part value optimization is a useful design approach in which component values are automatically adjusted to optimal manufacturer part values. A continuous optimization, on the other hand, involves automatically adjusting component values to optimal part values, regardless of whether those values are actual manufacturer part values. This forces the designer to identify the best suited manufacturer part values after the continuous optimization is complete. A discrete part value optimization simplifies the process by automatically identifying the optimal manufacturer part values. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to perform a discrete part value optimization using the Cadence AWR design environment combined with Modelithics models. We'll use a filter design example to show the process of performing this type of optimization. Here we have a bandpass filter design in the AWR Microwave Office software. Note that the iFilter synthesis wizard was used to determine the values of the capacitors and inductors. Our goal here is to achieve a passband from 1.05 to 1.35 GHz, making the center frequency 1200 MHz. Simulating this schematic produces this frequency response shown here. You can see our center frequency of 1200 MHz. Let's now turn this initial filter design into a complete one. We'll do that by adding the microstrip interconnects, which you can see in this new schematic here. We've also replaced the ideal component models with monolithics models. For each inductor, we're using a microwave global model for the Marada LQW15AN underscore 00 series. This model covers an inductance range of 1.5 to 82 nanohenries. For each capacitor, we're using a microwave global model for the AVX AQP series. This model covers a capacitance range of 0.05 to 68 picofarads. Let's now perform an EM circuit co-simulation of this filter. This is the extracted layout that will be analyzed with the Axiom EM simulator. The component models will be simulated within the microwave office circuit simulator. Note that this extracted layout does not include the component solder pads. This is because all of the models have been set to sim mode 0. With sim mode 0, solder pads are included within the model. However, if you do wish to simulate the solder pads in Axiom, you would need to set the models to sim mode 2. For more information on performing EM circuit co-simulations with SIM mode 2, please refer to application note 51 on our website. We'll set the part values of the components in our design to the part values from the initial schematic. So now let's simulate this filter. And you can see the response here. For comparison, the dashed black traces show the response of the initial filter schematic. You can see that the response of our filter has shifted downward in frequency due to the real-world parasitic models and the microstrip interconnects. The bandwidth of the filter has also decreased considerably. So the next step is to set the part values to the closest real-life manufacturer part values. But first, let's take a closer look at the microwave global models. A microwave global model covers the full range of part values for the vendor part family that it represents. Included with these models are text files that list all the part values associated with the model. By default, after installation, you'll find these files in the C drive, Program Files x86, AWR, Foundry, Modelithics, Data. To perform a discrete part value optimization, we'll need to utilize the text files for the Marada and AVX models that we're using. Let's open the text file for the Marada model. You can see that the first value is 1.5 and the last value is 82. 
That's because this model covers an inductance range of 1.5 to 82 nanohenries as we stated before. The text file for the AVX capacitor model we're using contains the same information for that model. Now we must load these two text files into our project. To do so, we'll need to enter these equations into our schematic. This will allow us to utilize those files. Now let's create a vector element that we'll call L underscore vector. We'll enter this equation in order to point this element to the text file for the Murata inductor model. We'll also create a vector element called C underscore vector. In a similar manner, we enter this equation in order to point this element to the text file for the AVX capacitor model. Now, let's create variables for the component part values. We'll create a variable called L underscore V1 for the outer shunt inductors. We'll set this variable to the L underscore vector element and we'll set the index to 1. You can now see that the variable is set to 1.5 because 1.5 is the first value in the text file for the Murata inductor model as we saw earlier. We'll also create these variables for the other component part values. Now let's set the variables to the values that are closest to the corresponding values in the initial schematic. We can do that by setting the index value to the one that points to the closest part value. If you're feeling like all of this is a little too fast for you, please be aware that this example project can be downloaded from the Modelithics website. As a side note, you may want to copy the part values from the text file and paste them into a spreadsheet. This will allow you to easily determine the vector indices associated with each part value. Here, we can see that the 55th index corresponds to a value of 7.4 nanohenries, which is the next value that we want. And finally, we'll just set our remaining two variables. Let's also compare the manufacturer part values with our initial values. You can see the differences here. Next, we need to set the part values of all the components in our design to the proper variable that we just created. So now we can go ahead and simulate this filter. And here are the results. Let's also compare these results with the results of the previous simulation with the initial non-manufacturer values. You can see that the performance didn't change much. Since we're not currently meeting our design goals, the next step is to perform a discrete part value optimization. As we stated earlier, this type of optimization will automatically adjust the component values to the optimal real-life manufacturer part values. To do this, we'll need to ensure that the variables we created are configured for optimization. So, let's go to the variable browser and let's select the optimize checkbox next to our four variables. Although we're not going to do it in this example, keep in mind that you can also optimize the dimensions of the microstrip interconnects. So in that scenario, you would optimize both the part values and the microstrip interconnect dimensions to get the desired performance. But in this case, we're only going to optimize the part values. So now let's optimize our filter. First, we'll need to specify our optimization goals, which we've done down here. And you can see our goals here on this plot. So let's just run the optimizer. Make sure that the optimization method is set to discrete local search. And then just start the optimizer. 
after the optimizer finishes, we can take a look at our response. And you can see that we're now achieving all of our design goals. So the design process is now complete. For comparison, the dashed black traces show the response of the filter with the initial manufacturer part values. Now in this case, we only performed a single discrete part value optimization. But for more complex designs, you might save time by first performing a continuous optimization followed by a discrete part value optimization. So let's go back to our schematic. And let's take a look at our variables. And you can see how they've been adjusted to the optimal real life part values. For comparison purposes, we can compare the final optimized part values that you see here with the initial values. So here you can see the difference between the initial and final part values. Finally, let's close by looking at the complete layout of this filter design. And as stated earlier, this example project can be downloaded from the Modelytics website. Well, we hope you found this video to be useful. Please contact us if you have any questions. Thank you.